Welcome to the Eagle's Nest, old fans and new fans. This is your home for Brockport College Sports on Brockport Campus Television. Tonight, I'm your host, Brett Gendra. We got a show full of some action and full of some fun today. The voice of Golden Eagle football, Gary Athemus, is on the show today to tell us what the Golden Eagle Pigskin program has going on this season. I'm going to take you through a quick look through Brockport Fall Sports by the numbers, and we've got a Golden Eagle flying highlight full of, well, highlights for you tonight. All this and more coming up on Eagle's Nest. Welcome to Eagles Nest. I'm Brett Gendra here with Gary Athemus, voice of Golden Eagles football. You can catch all that at 89.1 The Point. All the games are live. Gary, thanks for joining us. How are you? No problem. How are you? I am great. Now, it is Brockport football season. Last, their opening weekend, Brockport faced the St. John Fisher Cardinals, one of the top teams in the nation, ranked 14th, I believe. Uh, it was a very tough game. They suffered a 55-12 loss. You know, not really the best measuring stick for this Brockport team, especially with a lot of new players they have in, in their lineup. But what can we realistically expect out of this Brockport team this uh, season? Like you said, it was a very tough test for them, pretty much unfair. Uh, St. John Fisher expects to compete with Mount Union, who is pretty much you know, the Alabama of Division Three football, if you will. So opening under the lights, they hadn't played a game under the lights all last year. It was just a chance to see what they had talent-wise on offense and defense. So you can realistically expect a 500 record. Uh, Brockport will look to exploit some of the weaker teams in the NJAC Conference. Now, entering this season, with the exception of fullback Pat Hashey, the entire backs and wide receivers on that Brockport team, uh, they are all had their first collegiate starts on first string uh, over the weekend, or over the opening weekend, I'm sorry. And I mean, when can we realistically expect these guys to start clicking, you know, especially for being a new unit? Well, this will be week three, technically, their second game, though. So you can expect them to start clicking right about now. It's, it's still going to take a little bit of time. Uh, there's going to be a feeling out process, definitely in the first half of this Western Connecticut game. But now is the time where they should really start to click together after their summer workouts and that first game in the bye week. So Joe Scabilli is just trying to build his uh, repertoire, build his reputation with these wide receivers, and they're really just trying to grow together to become a cohesive unit. Now, one of those players making their first ever start, Jake Spout, freshman wide receiver, had 10 grabs in that game, earned himself NJAC player of the, or NJAC rookie of the week. Uh, you know, was it was it just his week to shine, or is he a guy that we're going to expect to see shine every game? You know, I uh, think of him as a Wes Welker of, on the New England Patriots. They, he's a guy that can line up in the slot. He's a little bit smaller. He's not going to run every, anybody over. But he can get the ball in his hands and make plays with the ball once he has it. And they ran a few end arounds to him, some bubble screens. So he's a guy they can plug in anywhere on that offense, and he will do something with it. All right, now last but not least, coming off fresh off their bye week, had a lot of time to hammer out some of the details that, you know, over the last two or after, last week and a half or so, you know, what do they need to do to be successful against Western Connecticut this weekend? Well, they just got to return to old school football, just ground and pound. They have a great offensive line, four seniors and one junior, all returning starters. And Redrick Alsace, the Division I transfer from Pace University, he has a lot of talent, and he's got a great offensive line to run behind. So for them, it's just get back to what you're good at and run the ball. All right, Gary Athemus, voice of Golden Eagles football. You can catch that all again at 89.1 The Point. All those games will be live on the radio station here on the Brockport campus. We're going to send it over to Ryan Gates for our sports update in a moment. I'm Ryan Gates with your Brockport sports update. The men's soccer team went undefeated on the week as they played both Thursday and Saturday. On Thursday, the Golden Eagles beat St. John Fisher 3 to nothing. The scoring started late in the first half when junior midfielder Brian Duffy notched his second goal of the season in the 43rd minute. The Eagles would tack on two more in the second half as Jamie Crum added his team leading goal total with his fourth of the season and Mark Orlando, Orlando put his first of the season in off a free kick. On Saturday, the Golden Eagles upended the number two team in Division Three as they shut out the Hobart Statesmen one to nothing. 
The lone goal came from senior defender Mike Bremen in the 10th minute off a free kick. Goaltender Joe Marino and the Golden Eagle defense did the rest, shutting out the Statesmen to earn their fourth straight shutout. Marino was named the Suniac Player of the Week for his efforts, and this is what he had to say about the game Saturday. The men's soccer team has only one game this week as they traveled to Medai Wednesday night. The women's soccer team had an up and down week as they first beat Keuka College 5-0 on Wednesday. Midfielder Sarah Lawson had a big game with five points on two goals and three assists. However, on Saturday, the team lost an early lead and the game as they fell to Nazareth 2-1. Forward Brooke Rear had the lone goal for the Golden Eagles. They will return to action this Saturday as they open up their SUNYAC schedule at Geneseo. The women's field hockey team played in two tight games this week. On Wednesday, they faced the Ithaca Bombers and came up short on a comeback as they lost 2-1. Crystal Mott scored the Golden Eagles' only goal late in the second half, but the Bombers held strong to earn the win. On Saturday, the Eagles defeated Nazareth 2-0 in their home opener. Casey Schreiner earned her second shutout of the season with six saves on the game. The field hockey team has a homestand this weekend as they face conference rivals New Paltz and Oneonta. The women's volleyball team had a busy weekend as they played in the Rochester Invitational. In the first match, the Golden Eagles beat Medai three sets to one Friday night. The team was led by Kelly Nowak, who had 12 kills and 8 digs. The team would not fare as well on Saturday as they lost both their games. First, they lost to Robert Wesley in three sets to zero and later fell to the host, University of Rochester, by the same score. Christy Schrantz was selected to the all-tournament team with 21 kills on the weekend. This is her second all-tournament team selection as she was also honored at the NYU tournament over Labor Day weekend. The team faces Cortland Tuesday before heading over to RIT for yet another busy weekend. And we'll be back with more of the Eagle's Nest right after this. All this and more. All this and more. All this and more coming up. Coming up. Coming up. On the Eagles Nest. And we're back. And right now we're going to take a look at Golden Eagle Sports by the numbers. Well, we've been talking a lot of football on today's show, so we're going to get started right there. Football had a nice week off to prepare for their fo first home game of the year coming up this Saturday against Western Connecticut, where they hope to grab their first win of the season. After a season opening loss to St. John Fisher 55-12, uh, it wasn't all that bad. Fisher's a nationally ranked program, 14th in the country right now. And in that game, senior Nathan Bull recorded 11 tackles. Freshman receiver Jake Spolick was named NJAC Rookie of the Week for his performance. 67 yards of total offense. 11 of those yards were part of his two runs. The other 56 were spread out over his 10 catches on the day. 10's where we're going to go off to next, where senior volleyballer Christy Schrantz had 10 kills against U of R over the weekend at the Rochester Invite. She earned a spot on the all-tournament team. She had 21 kills in the tournament, where the team defeated Medai College 3-1 Friday night, but were then down by Roberts Wesleyan 3-0 and U of R 3-0 on Saturday. This was her second all-tournament selection of the year. Speaking of two, Field hockey grabbed their second win of the season. For a team that just went 2-14 and 14 last season, they've now tied last season's win total in just five games. They've improved to a 2-3 and three record right now and are certainly on their way to a much more impressive season than last year. They defeated Nazareth on Sunday afternoon by a score of 2 to nothing. Well, I'm getting a little too happy here. Hopefully I don't get too excited. But it was in the first half where Crystal Mott and Taryn Rossi scored for the Golden Eagles to lead them to this victory. Since I'm glued to two, we'll stay with two. And I'll butcher, the, butcher these number puns like I'm beating a dead horse. We'll move on to women's soccer, who lost their match to Naz over the weekend 2-1 to one in their annual Pink for a Cure game. Last year, Naz and Brockport were able to raise $2,326 for cancer research, and they hope to break this year's total over last weekend. Brooke Greer scored the lone goal for the Golden Eagles, one to nothing to take that lead, but Naz bounced back with scores of their own. The two goals they allowed in the rest of that game by goaltender Aaron Asquith 
or the two goals she's allowed in the last 312 minutes over the last four games. And B4, I'll kill you guys with number puns. We'll stop at four and end on that note. So last off, I got to say thanks to our guests on today's show. Thanks to 89.1 The Point and The Point After. And thank you for watching. Remember, for more national and local sports coverage 24-7, check out thepointafter.org. Check out the Eagle's Nest on twitter.com slash enestsports. And for more clips on YouTube, updates, and whatever, check out Enest Sports on YouTube. And we'll see you guys next week. We're going to send it back to Brockport Weekly in the other studio, but not after this week's Flying Highlight. excited for this for the season in, in all sports. Oh, it's going to be yeah. a good one. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a hat trick for you this week, but we are going to pick a new one for next week's show. Would you like to go ahead and pick one? I absolutely will. For those of you who don't know what a hat trick is, each week we take suggestions from you for a story or an event or something interesting you would like to, we, we would like to be covered. We pick one and then report on it the following week. If you would like to suggest a hat trick, please visit BrockportTV.com. So, Alec, uh, what do we have in store for us next week? Hmm, let's, it says here, uh, who is the vice president of BSG? Oh, that should be an interesting one. We hear a lot of coverage about Eric May, but we don't really know too much about Michelle. So, hmm. interesting to see what happens there. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Hope you can come back next week. Thank you very much for watching.